Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Izzy from Powerlifting to Win, and in today's programming review, we're going to discuss 1020 Life by Brian Carroll. Over the past few weeks, I've received a number of requests to review this program, so as such, I couldn't fail to deliver. Now, 1020 Life is next in what I anticipate to be a long string of successful American powerlifters trying to cash in on the powerlifting ebook craze. Now, I'm not saying that this is a low quality book or anything like that, but you are paying $40 for a 100 page book that basically goes over the same traditional style of American powerlifting programming. That is one time per week frequency, extremely low volume, frequent deloads, and a heavy emphasis on assistance. Needless to say, I wasn't entirely thrilled with my purchase of 1020 Life, but to be fair, I never had any intention of running this program, so I was clearly a bit biased. Now, this program does separate itself from other typical American programs, such as 531, the Cube Method, the Lily Bridge Method, and others, because it does incorporate RPE, or the auto regulation of weight selection. And there is an extensive discussion in the book of movement selection. So how to pick assistance exercises based on where you're weak versus just giving you a list of assistance exercises that everyone should perform. So if you're interested in how to incorporate auto regulation into these typical American style powerlifting programs, or if you're the kind of person who enjoys discussions about weak points and how to address those weak points, then this could be a really interesting read for you. So let's go ahead and take a deeper look at 1020 Life. 1020 Life has a great pedigree as a powerlifting program. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Brian Carroll, he's a former world record holder in multiplied powerlifting. He squatted 1185 at 275, and to this day, he has top 10 totals in three weight classes, 220, 242, and 275. Now, 1020 Life isn't a program that was just optimized on one lifter. Brian Carroll has been coaching powerlifters for years now, so the program has been optimized on dozens and dozens of lifters. This is a powerlifting program made by a powerlifter, tested by real powerlifters. So again, the pedigree is definitely there with this program. Now I'm sure a bunch of you were hoping that I was going to lay out the program in its entirety, but I don't think that's ethical. So what I'm going to do is explain the basic tenets of the program and then give you a sample of what some of the weeks look like. Now first let me explain what the term 1020 life means. Brian Carroll's programming is broken up into 20 week periods where you culminate with a meet. Now the first 10 weeks are a off season and then the next 10 weeks are the pre-season or the pre-contest weeks. So you've got 10 week blocks, off season and pre-contest that add up to 20 weeks and then you're going to be doing that for the rest of your life, hence 10, 20 life. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you some samples of the program, but before I do that, it is worth noting that even though, even though it isn't shown in the following charts, there is a fourth day on this program that is sort of a pump and fluff upper body day bodybuilding style training session. It's not supposed to take you more than 30 minutes or so, and you're really just going in there to get in some extra bodybuilding volume for your upper body. Now, here's a sneak peek at the off-season programming from Brian Carroll's 1020 Life. As you can see, you're going to be deloading every third week on this program. The workouts are broken out into four exercises. The main competition lift, a close variant, assistance A, a general exercise for assistance, which is assistance B, and some core stability work, which is assistance C. Now, assistance A and assistance B are movements that you choose based on personal weaknesses. If you're weak out of the hole on squats, you might do pause squats for assistance A and GHRs for assistance B. If you have a weak bench lockout, you might do board work for assistance A and dips for assistance B. You get the picture. Carol provides an extensive list of movements to choose from for different weaknesses in the book. The main movements are performed for volume, but you're working up to a single top set using RPE as your guide. In the off season, the RPEs are kept extremely low. For example, your top set on the 5x5 week is never going to exceed RPE 7, which means three reps left in the tank. In other words, intensity and volume are minimized heavily in the off season. In my opinion, this is to facilitate the fact that most lifters are off cycle, not using drugs, during the off season. Carol makes a reference to indicate this in his book as well. Now, let's take a look at a sneak peek from the pre-contest programming period during 1020 Life. 
During the pre-contest phase, you'll notice that the same basic structure applies. However, instead of using RPEs on the main movements, you use RPEs on the main assistance movements. The RPEs are also much elevated. For the main movements, intensity is vastly increased and it is programmed via percentages of a clean contest max. That means there was no question about the lift being good and it was smooth. They gradually increase over the weeks leading you into the meet peak. Nonetheless, the intensity is still relatively low until the final three to four weeks of the pre-contest cycle where you're called on to set PRs and hit your planned third attempt for the next meet with the aid of a reverse band setup. And that's really all there is to it, guys. In the off-season, volume is up and intensity is down. And as you approach the meet, volume is slowly tapered down over the weeks and intensity is slowly tapered up. Because this is an actual powerlifting program, you are led towards a meet peak at the end of every single cycle. Here's what it looks like. As far as peaking goes, you're deloading two weeks out and doing practically nothing on meet week itself. You take your last heavy squat 14 days out, your last heavy bench 12 days out, and your last heavy deadlift 10 days out. From there, you're mostly doing blood flow work with light assistance movements as you head into the meet. This is an extended deload period, but if you think about it, it makes sense for the type of training that you've been doing. For the lifter who trains each lift once a week, the peak is going to take longer because their body is accustomed to covering on a weekly schedule as it is. A single week for peaking probably isn't enough to get that exaggerated super compensation effect. If you guys want to see the full program, you're going to have to get the book to see the rest. Brian Carroll's program features the basic but brutally effective pendulum style periodization. That means in the off season, the intensity is down and the volume is up, and the emphasis is clearly towards hypertrophy and work capacity. Now, as you start to shift into the later stages of the off-season and even into the pre-contest phase, the intensity goes way up and the volume is dropped down. And you're decidedly shifting into a strength emphasis period where you're dealing with heavier weights and less overall volume. Now, as I've said in the past, in my opinion, pendulum periodization is the single most effective type for late stage intermediates and early advanced athletes. I believe that this is the type of periodization that most of us should be using for the vast majority of our powerlifting careers. Obviously, for novices and early intermediates, this is completely inappropriate. You're gonna make progress a lot faster on simple linear methodologies or programming that's only varied from week to week. In reality, this program is really aimed at more advanced strength athletes. Late stage intermediates and truly advanced strength athletes is the intended audience of this program. In fact, in his book, Carol points out that his goal is to get you a five to 10 pound PR on each lift at the end of each 20 week cycle. Now, a lot of you guys are probably thinking, dude, 10 pounds for 20 weeks of training? But the reality is, is that if you're getting about 25 pounds on all three lifts every six months or so, that's 50 pounds a year. And if you've already laid that intermediate foundation, getting 50 pounds a year for another 10 years is what separates the good lifters from the great lifters. Because you can get to a really high level in your first couple of years if you work hard and you have the gift for it. But if you want to get to that all-time great level, you've got to slowly hammer away adding a little bit at a time for years. And that's what Carol's program helps you to do. It's not one of these beginner programs that gets you from, you know, 0% to 80% really quickly. It's the program that takes you from 80% to 100% over a decade. That's why it's 10, 20, life. But again, if you're a novice or an early intermediate athlete, look towards something simpler. It's going to give you faster progress. The programming on 1020 Life really mirrors the periodization plan. To be honest, because you're deloading every third week, you can't say that this program employs anything resembling block. Really, there isn't even that much variation from week to week on this program. Now, there is substantial variation from the early part of the off-season to the late part of the off-season, and there's even more substantial variation from the early part of the off-season to the late part of the pre-contest phase. However, in order to achieve that difference, the volume and intensity are slowly tapered from week to week. So in reality, 
again, the programming is kind of a pendulum style where you start off with higher volume, lower intensities, and you slowly work your way towards higher intensities and lower volumes. Now, in my opinion, block programming is more effective for both late stage intermediates and early advanced athletes, but the reality is, is that this will work really well for the people that it's intended to work for, which are, again, late stage intermediates and early advanced athletes. I just happen to think that block is a more intelligent and better way to do it. But this will still work, as I said. I truly believe that as you become more and more advanced, block becomes more and more necessary. 1020 Life actually rates fairly well in terms of specificity. The majority of the meaningful volume that you do is on the main movements and then the close variations of the main movements. And the assistance exercises are tailored to your particular individual weaknesses. Now that doesn't necessarily increase specificity, but it does increase the training effect. This is a powerlifting program designed by a powerlifter, tested on other powerlifters. Everything about it is optimized for powerlifting. You're led towards a meat peak at the end. It's just specific to powerlifting. Now, of course, I'd love to see more volume on the main movements and on the main variations, but that isn't really a criticism of specificity, that's a criticism of fatigue management. And we'll get there. 1020 Life employs basic progressive overload. As the weeks go by, you're handling heavier and heavier weights. And as we all know, if you're lifting heavier weights than you've lifted before, that serves as a progressive overload. And it's the primary driver of progress, along with the volume that you do on this program. As I'm sure that many of you who are familiar with my other reviews already predicted, my biggest issue with this program comes down to fatigue management. This program appears to be primarily designed for enhanced lifters. Now why do I say that? Well, all you have to do is take a look at the frequency and the volume of the program. Again, once per week frequency just does not appear to be optimal for the natural trainee. On this program, you're not doing enough work. Now, depending on where you're at in the 20 weeks, you're doing between one to three work sets on the main lift and one to three sets on the main assistance movement. So on average, you're doing two or three work sets for the main movement and the main variation per week. There's a lot of naturals that do more work than that in a single workout per lift. This is just not enough for most naturals. And the other thing is that there's just no need to keep the intensities as low as they are kept in the off season for the natural lifter. Brian Carroll has people doing, in the first week of the off-season, and even later parts of the off-season, sets of five at RPE six or seven. Now, for those of you guys who are familiar with the RPE chart, a set of five at RPE six or seven is going to be around 75, 76, 77 percent. And because throughout the entire off-season, you're sticking primarily to RPEs six and seven, you really are doing no meaningful work above 85 percent for you know, almost a full 10 weeks. And that is just unnecessary for the natural trainee. I don't know why any natural would ever spend almost 10 weeks below 85%. There's just no need for this much recovery to be built into the program for the natural. The natural doesn't come off cycle, so he never has huge swings in his performance because of different supplements that he's on or not on. The natural can sustain higher intensities and higher volumes year round than this program uses. Now don't take that as me saying that periodization is unnecessary. That's not my point. My point is that this is an exaggerated accounting of what periodization should look like, especially for the natural. I also want to say that in my opinion, natural or not, you don't need to deload every three weeks. That's just too often. Unless you're paranoid about injury, or you have incredibly poor recovery because you're an older lifter, this is just not necessary. Even enhanced lifters can train longer than this without deloading. Do you really wanna spend more than a third of your training year not training? Because on Carol's program, you're deloading every third training week and you're also taking off four to six weeks between each meet. So in reality, I mean, you might only be training half of the year. That's just not enough for optimal progress in my opinion. Virtually all injury-free lifters can sustain more volume than this program prescribes. 
One of the strongest points of 1020 Life is that it actually incorporates RPE to determine training loads. As we all know, auto regulation of training loads is great because it allows you to work in the intended intensity range each day. Just for example, let's say your program calls for 75%, but you're having a horrible day. Well, 75% of your best day might be 90% that day, so you're working in a way higher intensity range than you're supposed to, and you might dig yourself an even deeper recovery hole. Now, just the opposite can be true on a good day. If your program calls for 75%, but you're just way stronger than when you started the training cycle and you're having your best day ever, that 75% might be 60% of what you're capable of that day. And at that point, you're not really working in powerlifting intensity ranges anymore. By using RPEs, we can make sure that we're in the correct intensity range for that day. Now, one of the other strongest aspects of 1020 Life in terms of individual differences is that Brian Carroll actually takes the time to discuss movement selection to determine your individual weaknesses in your force curve for each lift. If you're weak at the bottom, he has suggestions for you. If you're weak in the middle, he has different suggestions for you. And if you're weak at the top, there's even yet more suggestions for you to improve those weaknesses. Now, this accounting of individual differences in terms of weaknesses really enhances the training effect. And it's one of the primary benefits that you can get from working with a powerlifting coach. Anybody can copy a program off of the internet, but until a coach sees your actual lifts and sees where you get slow and where you fail, your programming is not optimal because the assistance movements and the secondary movements that you're doing are not specific to your weaknesses, and if they were, you'd make better gains. If you'd like help with determining what assistance exercises are best for you, shoot me an email at admin at powerliftingtowin.com. Now all this said, even though 1020 Life is pretty strong in terms of individual differences, it still falls a little short because it fails to auto-regulate volume. And in fact, this is the single biggest failing of the entire program. We've already mentioned that in my opinion, this program is not enough volume. Well, all it would have to do is auto-regulate volume and that wouldn't be an issue anymore. Here's why volume has to be auto-regulated. If you're dieting or if you're sick, you're gonna get fatigued more quickly than if you are bulking or you're feeling good. If you are 50 years old, you will fatigue more quickly than if you are 18 years old. If your girlfriend just broke up with you or your dog died or you got in a car accident that day, you're gonna fatigue really quickly because your stress levels are already gonna be through the roof. Now, if your programming doesn't account for these different scenarios, these different conditions, if your volume is not auto-regulated to what you can do that day, your programming is gonna be suboptimal when the conditions change. Because if you're having a crappy day, you might end up doing too much. And when you're having a good day, you could possibly get carried away if you don't have the volume auto regulated, right? Or you could just do not enough on a good day as well. Both of those are potential issues. And that's why, in my opinion, the auto regulation of volume is so critical. In my opinion, unless a program auto regulates volume, it cannot be optimal, period. Of all the cookie cutter style American programs that I've seen, I think Brian Carroll's is my favorite thus far. Now while I am not a fan of deloading every third week, to say the least, the bottom line is that these lower frequency, lower volume programs with frequent deloads have proven to be quite effective for enhanced lifters. I also have to say that I really, really, really hope that Carol's use of RPE catches on in the mainstream powerlifting community and that a lot of these program writers start incorporating auto-regulation into their programs as well. I hope Carol started a trend here. That said, for natural lifters, I just can't recommend these American style powerlifting programs with once per week frequency and minimal volume. It's not even a criticism necessarily against Carol's programming, it's more of a criticism against the status quo of American style powerlifting programming. Naturals, in my opinion and in my experience, and by just studying the top IPF lifters, do much, much better with higher volumes and higher frequencies. And it makes sense, the more work you put in, the better you're gonna get at something. Furthermore, this program, in my opinion, is really oriented more towards advanced lifters. If you just look at the way that it's structured in terms of the 20-week cycles and the intention to get you 25 pounds or so on your total every 20 weeks, well, that's just not a good match for the people who buy ebooks for the most part. 
Now, I, I'm aware that Carol was writing this for advanced lifters, but the bottom line is that mostly novices and intermediates buy ebooks. And for these lifters, this program is just unnecessarily complex and too slow in terms of the progress. So overall, if you're a natural lifter or a novice or intermediate of any kind, I'd recommend that you look elsewhere. If you are an enhanced lifter who has been doing this for a long time, I'm highly confident that this program will produce good results for you. So the requests have flooded in and the next program, it's more of a book, that I'm going to take a look at is Jamie Lewis's Destroy the Opposition. Now I've read this in the past and Jamie Lewis has one of the most unique takes on lifting, I think that's fair to say, out there. So it's going to be very interesting and entertaining to review Lewis's work and I really think that we're all going to learn a lot from it because again, it is very unique. So if you're a fan of Jamie Lewis, be on the lookout for that review. If you guys found this content interesting, informative, or entertaining, please like, share, and send it out into the interwebs for me. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to pop on over to the Powerlifting to Win forums and I will address any issues that you have personally. If you're interested in personalized custom coaching, including how to correctly pick assistance movements, shoot me an email at admin at powerliftingtowin.com and we can talk more about the Powerlifting to Win coaching services. Subscribe if you haven't already, and don't forget to check out powerliftingtowin.com for more great powerlifting information. Have a nice day.